my name's Sharon and my channel's Budget Crafty Mama. In a previous video I showed you how to make the templates to make these little decorative tea towels for your kitchen. Um, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make them. Now you can go as fancy or as plain as you want with these. Uh, you could really dress them up um, or you can just do them quite simple. And with Mother's Day coming up, th these are going to be a really nice gift to give your mum or your gran or, you know, just anybody that's setting up home, it, it, they'll decorate your kitchen up lovely. So I'm going to be making it today out of some cut off material um, and this is just left over from making a dress for Tamsin. So I'm going to be using that because it matches the, t the towel I made last week. So it, all my kitchen will be all matching. So I'll reposition the camera and then we'll get started. Right, so for this project, I'm going to be needing a few things. So, I've got my fabric. I've got two pieces of iron-on interfacing. Um, I've got two pieces because I'm making two. So, if you were just making one, you just need one piece of interfacing. Um, I've got my pattern that I previously um, made. I've got some pins. I've got my little clips. And then I've got scissors for cutting fabric. I've got some bias binding. I've got some lovely trim. This is what I'm going to be using today. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I've got some poppers, popper fastenings. I'm going to use these instead of buttons or velcros today. Um, and then I've got the little tool for using it and the little tool for making the hole. These all came as a kit, um, and they're reasonably inexpensive off eBay. So I've got all those ready for as we go through the stages. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my iron out, and I'm going to iron the interfacing onto one piece of fabric. So I'm just going to be interfacing one piece of fabric, um, but I'm going to put it on the fabric before I cut it out. I just find it makes it a little bit easier than trying to match it up. So I'll just get the ironing board and then I'll be back. Right, so as you can see I've got my fabric out. I've got it the wrong way up and then I've got the interface. Now if you feel on your interfacing you'll feel that one side's smooth and the other side's sort of rough. It's got like little dots on it. Those are the glue dots. So that needs to go down onto the fabric and you need your fabric the wrong way up. And then you need to turn your steam off on your iron. And you want to press rather than iron. So you want to put it down onto it and pick it up and move it. You don't want to iron, otherwise you cause creases in it. Right, so that's that done. So... And you're just doing this on one side, you're not doing it on both sides. Um, I'm just doing it to the one. So I'm just going to unplug that iron because we don't need it again now. Right, so the next step is you want to put your pattern piece onto your interfacing and cut it out. Now I'm going to line both of these up and do them both at the same time. Before I put that on. But if you're not very confident you could just cut them out one at a time. I'm just going to do, do through two thicknesses. And then I'm just going to pin them on. Right. So I'm just going to as close as I can, a bit cack handed today. I'm fine sewing but I'm struggling cutting out. Right, so that's that all cut out. So now what I'm going to do is um, 
I've got two more pieces of fabric here. I'm just going to line those up and I'm just going to take the pattern off this and pop it on here and cut it out. But I'm not going to make you watch me do that one as well. So as soon as I've cut that out, I'll come back to you. Tuck the trim onto it. Now to do that, um, I'm just going to zoom in a bit. I'm going to be putting it either side. So how I'm going to do that is I'm just going to measure. I folded the piece in half and I've done like a finger crease down the middle so that I've got like a slightly visible line so that I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm just going to measure from that line across. And I'm just going to put it about one and a half centimetres. from that line. I'm just going to pop a pin in there and that's just like a little marker. I'm just going to do the same again at the bottom. Try and make sure I get straight pins. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my little piece of trim and I'm just going to butt it up against those pins that I've put in. and that will help me make sure I get it in a nice straight line and then I'm just going to pop a couple of pins in there just to hold it in place till I sew it now with this trim I've bought it's beautiful but it's really difficult to work with. The minute you take the sellotape off the end or undo it, it all starts to unravel. So I've just got a bit of scrap fabric and just popped it on the back and just zigzagged it on just to stop it fraying and coming undone. All right, so now I'm just gonna to go to the sewing machine and I'm gonna zigzag across the top on the neckline just to make sure it doesn't fray when I've sorted it and then I'm just going to stitch down and I'm going to zigzag across the bottom as well. So I'll reposition the camera and I'll come back and show you what I'm doing. Right, so as you can see I'm at the sewing machine so I'm just going to put my machine on a zigzag stitch and I'm just going to take it down to quite a small stitch um, because I don't want it being too wide. It's got I've got to be able to hide it when I do my neckline. But I just want to make sure that that's not going to come undone on me so I'm just going to pass over it about three or four times just to make sure it's not going to come undone And then I'm just going to sew straight down this line, right down the centre of it. I didn't bother back stitching there because this, I'd already got this, the thread knotted because I'd gone straight from doing the zigzag straight down. And I'm just going to back stitch a couple of stitches. And then I'm just going to do the same as I did on the top. I'm just going to lift my needle and I'm going to go onto a zigzag stitch. And then I'm just going to go down the second one and zigzag across the bottom of that as well. I've already zigzagged the top to secure it. Remember to put it back onto a straight stitch. I am going to back stitch this at the top though. I'm going to take my pins out before I get to them. I'm 
And then I've lifted my needle. I'm going back to a zigzag stitch. Always remember to lift your needle before you change the stitch, otherwise you'll break your needle. And again, just going back and forwards three or four times, just to make sure that's not going to come undone. So then, as you can see, those are stitched on and I'm just going to trim the ends off in a minute so that will be fine. Right so the next stage is I'm going to put some like little buttons in the middle um, and I'm just going to use the plastic poppers that I'm going to use as fasteners uh, but I find these little, um, they're like a little flower that have got a hole in the middle of them so I'm just going to pop that popper through the centre of that so it makes it slightly more decorative in the middle. Uh, now what I need to do now is to decide where I want that little flower and I've just got to poke the hole through with my pokey tool and then put the flower through. Just put the little, it's got like a little sharp plastic point on it. I don't know if you can see that. I think you can see them. They've got like a little sharp thing on them and then it's got like a little backer. And these are like the fasteners, but these won't be fastened, they're just just for show. So then I need to put this tool on it. Struggling a bit. I knew I shouldn't have taken my brace off. And then you just gotta squeeze it. and that will close it and it will fasten them. And you can see it's on there. And these are quite easy, you've just got a front and a back to these and you just pop them on. You don't even have to make a hole in if the fabric isn't terribly thick. Um, I can find that this fabric I could just poke it through. If you've got thicker fabric, you would definitely need to use. You just pop it into the little clip. Now, I got these as a set, these um, little fasteners. Uh, and they weren't very expensive. I think I got something like about 350 of the little plastic fasteners, fasteners with the tool. So that, you see, that's beginning to look a bit pretty. Um, I think I got about 350 of these plastic fasteners in this tub. As you can see, they're going to go an awful long way. Um, with the tool to put them on with, and the little point, you know, the little pointy thing that makes the hole. Um, and I think I only paid about ten pound for those. They're not that expensive. So. That's the front all dressed up. Now I'm going to show you how we sew it together. So I'm literally just going to take the next one, put them the right way around. And I'm just going to put one on top of the other and I'm just going to pin them together down the sides. Just pop a few pins in. And I'm just going to do that on the other side as well. As you can see with my cack handed wrist I've not exactly cut these out perfectly but I will make sure that I sew round so that they're nice and straight. And then I'm just going to sew um, a quarter inch so if I turn the machine on, all the way around the edge. Stitch a little bit at the beginning. So 
and then I'm just going to snip that off. So as you can see, I've just sewn all, all the way around the edge. And then I'm just going to do the other side as well, and then I'll come back. Right, so as you can see, I've done that, and I've just taken some pink and shears around, and I've just trimmed the edges off quite close to the stitching. Now I'm just going to turn these the right way round. And it's quite easy to do. So I'm just going to do the second one and then I'm just going to go around and I'm going to press it so it's nice and flat and then I'll be back. Right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some bias binding around the neck and I'm just going to pop this round the neck. Now I've already folded over and ironed it in half and I've left it so that it's got a slight sort of one side slightly sticking out more than the other and that bit's going to go to the back so I'm going to start in the middle at the back In a clip just by that and then I'm just going to work my way around just enclosing those raw edges and then just putting clips on it Right now, as you can see, I'm back at the beginning, so I'm just gonna. I've folded that end jo edge over, so I'm just gonna cut this off, and then I'm just gonna lift that end up that's folded over nicely, and I'm just gonna tuck this one that's got the raw edges in first, and then put the one that's got the nice fold on the edge over the top of it. So it's all in case there, so. I'm just going to go to the sewing machine now and I'm just going to sew all the way around the edge on that, on both of them. And then I'll come back and show you what that looks like. Alright, so as you can see, I've sewn those on. And now what you need to do is we need to turn these edges over slightly and iron them. So we're just sort of making a seam allowance. So I'm just... I'm going to fold those over about a quarter of an inch. And just iron, iron it on, creasing it over. I've already done the other side. I'm just going to go over that again. But be careful when you do this side because remember we've got these little plastic buttons. If you go over that too much with the iron, you'll melt them. So, and I've already done the other one. As you can see, it's beginning to look like a little dress on top. So that's the two of those done. I'm just going to move my iron in mat. I did invest in one of these wool ironing mats. Everybody's raving about them. All these quilters are raving how fantastic they are. Um, so I thought, oh, I'm going to get one of those. Not so fantastic, I don't think. Right, now with your tea towel, you want to fold it in half. Get the edges nice and straight. And then you're going to cut along this line, along the fold. Right. And then I'm just going to take mine to the 
overlocker and I'm just going to overlock the edge just to seal the edges and stop them fraying because um, I don't like them fraying so I'll come back when I've done that and now what you need to do is you need to decide if you're going to um, do a gather stitch so if you did a gather stitch across the top and just sort of ruffled it all up like that to put in it or if you're going to pleat it now with these that have got the squares and the lines I find it very easy to pleat them so what I'm going to start with doing is on the seamed edge there let's just cut that thread off on the edge there that's got the seam on it I'm just going to roll that over twice and put a pin in and I'm putting the pins quite low because I don't want to have to take them out until after I finish sewing sewing it on so I'm putting the pins probably a good two to three inches down um, so they're well out of the way for when I'm sewing so I'm just going to do that with the other side as well just double roll it and put a pin in I'm just going to sort of go so far in. I'm going to use the lines as my guide. I'm just going to make a pleat there. And I'm just going to pop two pins in. Just to hold that pleat together. And I'm going to match the other side. Do exactly the same thing on the other side. And then I'm just going to go into the middle and I'm just going to do the same. And I'm slightly going to overlap this one. Do the same again, go from the middle. I'm going to slightly overlap it. So when you fold those in like that, you'll see that they'll fit into that quite nicely. So, And you just want to put them in sort of about half an inch. You don't want it going in too far. You need it to go in far enough that you're going to be catching it with the sewing machine. So I'm probably just putting mine in about half an inch. And then I'm just going to pop a couple of pins along this. I'm just checking that the back is low enough down so that when I stitch, I'm going to be catching the back as well. And I've already done the other one, so I'm just going to pop that in as well. Right, perfect. As you can see. It's beginning to look like a little dress. So I'm just going to stitch along there um, and then um, we'll put some poppers on. So I'll just reposition the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Right, so it's all pinned and it's all in place. So I'm just going to put it underneath my sewing machine. Just going to back stitch a couple of stitches. And then I'm just going to, if you can find the foot of my sewing machine, so across. And I'm just going to take the pins out as I go, and I'm going to hold it quite tight so it doesn't move. Now you're going through a lot of thicknesses here, and if you've got a walking foot, um, then you might want to use that. But I just thought, you know, I'd show you that you don't need a walking foot if you go carefully because um, a lot of people don't have a walking foot.
So that's that all sewed together. I'm just going to push my sewing machine out of the way for a minute. And then I'm just going to take all these pins back out again. So those are all the pins out. And now all we've got to do is add the poppers. And if you can see that. So it's nice and pleated. I always think they look nicer when they're pleated rather than gathered. So all we've got to do now is add some poppers to it. Right, so that's all sewn together. Now we've just got to put the little poppers on to go on the side. Now you could put Velcro, you could put buttons, you could sort of put some ribbon round to make them like a tie, um, or you could just leave them like that if you just want to droop it over over your oven door handle and you don't want to fasten it. It's not really going to go anywhere, but I just like to put the little button fasteners on there. So how I'm going to do that? Um, to start with, I'll show you the fasteners. So you've got a plastic round bit that's the top bit with a spike in it. Um, and you'll need two of those for each fastener. And then you've got two... Oh, it's not going to focus very well. You've got two pieces. One sinks in and one sticks out. They're like a male and a female. So for each side you're going to need two of the um, bigger ones with the spikes in and you're going to need a male and a female so for each side you're going to need those so you're going to need two sets of those for each um, one so what I like to do is I like to position where I'm going to have it line it all up so it's all nice and even and then I take my little pokey tool and I like to poke it straight through both layers of fabric so it comes out the other side and I make my hole you can see it's come right the way through and then I take one off and leave the other one on the spike otherwise the hole disappears and you can't find it and then you want to put your top clip on And then I'm putting on the back my mail. And then when you've got that on there, you just squeeze it together. Now this tool has got like a one side's got like a rounded plate on it, and the other side's got like a rubber um, stopper. And you put the larger plastic bit down onto that plate. See. Let's just do the other one. Very awkward trying to do this with my left hand. So there you go. So you see you've got a nice smooth bit on the outside and the male bit there and then you've got the female bit on the back. So when you put them together they'll pop closed. And I'll keep it closed. I'm just going to do the other side now as well. So there's the finished details. I've already put the poppers on the other one. So now I've got a matching set of tea towels. And I just think they're so pretty to go in any kitchen. Uh, they'll dress up any kitchen and you can do them in any colour. You don't need to do it with um checkered tea towels, you could do it with plain tea towels. Uh, do whatever you, ever you want. Um, you could even do these dress bits on the top of towels as well if you wanted to rather than just the type I'd done on the towels on the other video. So you could sort of decide, you know, if you wanted to put these on towels and tea towels or you wanted to use the other topper. Um, I just think these look really cute for tea towels and they would make really good Mother's Day's presents because um, it's Mother's Day coming up soon. So, okay. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please press the like button and subscribe. And um, if you've got any comments, I'd really appreciate to hear them. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.